Recently, China's troubled property giant Evergrande Group, which has been mired in a debt crisis since last year, once again drew public attention. On August 17th, Evergrande Group filed for creditor protection in a U.S. Manhattan bankruptcy court, seeking the court's approval for a 19 billion U.S. dollar debt restructuring. On August 16th, rumors spread like wildfire on social media about the divorce of Xu Jiayin, chairman of Evergrande. Speculation abounds that Xu Jiayin and his wife Ding Yumei may be pursuing a technical divorce, enabling Ding Yumei to financially separate from Xu and potentially evade debt issues. While this news has captured the attention of the capital market, its authenticity remains unverified. On August 10th, Evergrande Group issued multiple reports, including the annual bond reports for 2021 and 22, as well as the annual audit reports and financial statements for 2022. According to the financial statements, Evergrande Real Estate reported a net loss of 52.7 billion yuan in 2022. As of December 31st, 2022, its current liabilities totaled 1,679 billion yuan, while its cash assets, including cash, cash equivalents, and rest- Restricted funds stood at nine billion yuan. Based on financial data released in July by three of Evergrande's main companies, the total liabilities of China Evergrande, Evergrande Auto, and Evergrande Property Services exceeded 2.6 trillion yuan, while their combined assets were only about 1.96 trillion yuan. Financially, Evergrande Group appears to be in a dire situation with liabilities exceeding assets. What is the magnitude of 2.6 trillion yuan? Netizens have visualized this figure as equivalent to the total assets of Shanghai Bank, or 400 million Hermes belts, or the cost of building 48 Chinese aircraft carriers, or even more than the annual GDP of Finland. A large chunk of Evergrande's debt comprises borrowings of 612 billion yuan, trade payables, and other liabilities totaling 1 trillion yuan, including 596 billion yuan for construction materials, and other debts amounting to 102 billion yuan. As of the end of 2022, Evergrande faced 1,519 lawsuits with a combined claim of 395 billion yuan. Many of these lawsuits demand payment for unpaid construction and material costs, exacerbating the issue of zombie real estate projects. Projects in China, zombie real estate refers to halted construction due to unpaid work, leaving buildings unfinished. As many of China's real estate giants face financial crises, developers abandon construction projects due to funding challenges. Numerous properties are left half-built and abandoned, widely known in China as unfinished buildings. According to official statistics, Evergrande has left 1.6 million properties unfinished, leaving 6 million homeowners stranded. The emergence of unfinished buildings and zombie projects not only highlights the tragedy of China's real estate industry, but represents a nightmare for ordinary Chinese homebuyers. Buying a house in China is akin to a significant life event, even a family milestone. Owning a home provides a sense of security and belonging. As such, when children come of age or get married, parents often provide or are expected to buy a property as a symbol of family continuity and security. Despite unaffordable housing prices for many, families will use savings for multiple generations or even resort to high interest loans. The phenomenon of unfinished buildings means countless families have invested their life savings with no return. In one video, a woman recounts how she purchased a property years ago, only to find the developer ceased construction midway. As a result, her family could not move into their home, yet they still grapple with substantial monthly mortgage payments. In China, there have been countless protests due to unfinished buildings. On July 24th, at the Evergrande City Project site in the Pingshan district of Shenzhen, homeowners gathered to protest. Some of them were taken away by the police. In recent years, the phenomenon of unfinished buildings or zombie real estate projects is increasingly common in China. So, what is causing this? The current situation in China's housing market shows two primary aspects of stagnation: market stagnation and financial stagnation. A national real estate survey earlier this year indicated there are nearly 600 million buildings nationwide and approximately 1.2 homes available per person. The supply resulting from overdevelopment evidently exceeds the demand. Therefore, this has resulted in market stagnation.
Then there is financial stagnation, which mainly refers to the inability of developers to source more funds to complete their projects, leading to halted constructions. This problem of unfinished projects not only creates a credibility crisis in the real estate industry, but also weakens consumer purchasing confidence. The intensifying slump in property sales is a vicious cycle that could severely impact the economy. According to financial reports from Evergrande before 2020, the company had been profitable, netting profits in the hundreds of billions of RMB annually. This raised questions among netizens. Couldn't these profits cover the debt? Where did all the money earned by Evergrande over the years go? The financial direction and business model of Evergrande can be simply described as leveraging $40 billion to manipulate $2.44 trillion. Evergrande would first purchase a piece of land or plan a project. They would then use it to secure bank loans, project company funds, shareholders' investments, government subsidies, and the money from ordinary citizens buying homes. This quick money would be spent on immediate debts, desired investments, and most importantly, into the pockets of the company shareholders. Such rapid acquisition of large sums of money is why other real estate companies copy Evergrande's business model. This has laid the groundwork for the collective downfall of the real estate sector. To reasonably extract funds from the public, Evergrande launched debt for asset swap schemes. Now, with liabilities exceeding assets, they've proposed a housing for debt scheme to their creditors. Evergrande's creditors are so unfortunate to encounter such a shameless its debt for assets scheme. You know how shameless this scheme is? The proposal from Evergrande is to offset 30% of the total house price against the debt and still require the supplier to additionally pay the remaining 70%. For instance, if Evergrande owes you $3 million, they offer you a house worth $1 million. The $300,000 of that would be considered as repayment, and you would still need to pay $700,000 to obtain that house. What's more, it might be an under-construction house. You end up paying $700,000 more for a $3 million debt, making everything square with Evergrande. You'd receive 10 of Evergrande's under-construction properties. This is the epitome of shamelessness. Even the Treaty of Shimonoseki wasn't this humiliating. Regarding the Evergrande crisis, some netizens have leaked that for a private enterprise, Evergrande has 35 Communist Party committees, 1,023 Communist Party branches, and 10,841 Communist Party members. Therefore, some believe that the numerous internal party members of Evergrande are the main culprits for the capital outflow and bankruptcy. This netizen also said that the conclusion from Evergrande's bankruptcy is that having CCP organizations in private enterprises is akin to self-destruction. The decision by Evergrande, a Chinese company, to file for bankruptcy protection in the United States has stirred heated debates among netizens in China. On August 17th, Evergrande Group sought bankruptcy protection in the Manhattan Bankruptcy Court in New York under Chapter 15 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. As per this chapter, when a company undergoes restructuring in another country, its assets in the U.S. are protected by the government. This move by Evergrande was met with widespread criticism and skepticism. Many question Evergrande's motives for seeking bankruptcy protection in the U.S. They acquire land in China, take money from the Chinese people, and then turn to the U.S. for protection. And yet, the founder Xu Jian acts as if nothing has happened. What does it mean to apply for bankruptcy protection in the U.S.? We all know that bankruptcy typically means the end of business operations. However, bankruptcy protection is like a buffer before actual bankruptcy. During this period, creditors can't pursue their debts, and the company can continue its operations, potentially restructuring and shedding bad assets to get back on track. The reason Evergrande can apply in the U.S. is that it's not registered in China but in the Cayman Islands, a jurisdiction compatible with U.S. bankruptcy laws. U.S. law permits its bankruptcy courts to engage in bankruptcy cases from another country, as long as the company's legal representative is authorized to do so. At this time, there are still people speaking up for Evergrande, saying they did this in order to make a comeback. Speculations arose when a recent announcement related to investments in Evergrande's automotive ventures distinctly mentioned Xu Jiayin's wife, Ding Yumei, separately. If they were still married, her title would be listed as Xu Jiayin's spouse. This led many to speculate they might have divorced in order to safeguard assets. However, Evergrande declined to comment on the matter. In addition, Evergrande was also investigated for alleged illegal information disclosures. Now, this is interesting. If they were divorced, Ms. Ding's title in the announcement shouldn't be described in this way. If they indeed separated, the intent behind applying for bankruptcy protection becomes all too clear. 
It suggests that Mr. Xu is not focused on repaying debts or continuing construction, but rather on preserving his assets. Is this appropriate? Who can guarantee the investments of those who purchased properties from him? On the surface, they promise property delivery, but behind the scenes, there's a potential divorce to safeguard assets, followed by the bankruptcy protection application. It seems like they've paved an escape route for themselves. So, is it only their money that matters and the common people's money doesn't? Beyond the controversy surrounding its founder, the ripple effects of Evergrande's financial issues have been significant. Numerous industries and companies associated with Evergrande are now struggling for survival due to outstanding debts. The boss, who has owed money, burst into a furious rant during a meeting. Amid Evergrande's pronounced debt concerns, other leading real estate firms in China are also grappling with financial strains. On August 11th, Country Garden, China's largest non-state-owned developer, projected a net loss of between 45 billion and 55 billion yuan for the period from January to June 2023. This forecast was soon followed by several debt defaults. State-owned real estate company Sino Ocean Group announced on August 14th an expected loss of about 17 billion to 20 billion yuan for the first half of the year, a significant increase from a loss of 11 billion yuan during the same period last year. The current total debt for Sino Ocean Group stands at 109 billion yuan. Meanwhile, another Chinese developer, Soho China, reported a net profit of 13.6 million yuan for the first six months of the year, marking a sharp 93% decline from the same period last year. Concurrently, its revenue dropped by 8% to 821.5 million yuan. On August 18th, Soho China issued a financial distress warning, revealing a notice from the Beijing Taxation Bureau demanding immediate payment of 2 billion yuan in owed taxes and penalties. With only a mere 600 million on hand, the company faces difficulties in settling this debt. In addition to this amount, the company also has an unsettled 4 billion yuan bank loan. On August 23rd, Guangzhou Finland Real Estate Development Company Limited announced liquidity concerns due to macroeconomic factors, industry situation, and credit environment. By the announcement date, the company had failed to repay 340 million U.S. dollars in foreign bond principles with accumulated unpaid interest of 69 million U.S. dollars. Evergrande's crisis affects not only the real estate sector, but the entire Chinese economy. Real estate impacts various sectors, including construction, steel, appliances, and more. With the rupture of developers' financial chains, construction orders will plunge, leading to rising unemployment. Considering that the construction sector alone employs roughly 8% of urban workers, the repercussions on related industries like home renovation and furniture will be massive. Moreover, it's well known that many local governments rely heavily on land sales, with land transfer fees and property taxes being their primary sources of income. A real estate market collapse would put these governments in a tight spot, lacking funds for new developments or repaying past loans. Indeed, several local government financing platforms have already defaulted on their debts in recent years. Evergrande, with its investments across various sectors, is like a linchpin holding many parts together. Amidst current regulations and administrative approaches, the trajectory of Chinese real estate remains uncertain and could potentially become a ticking time bomb for the Chinese economy. If the implosion of China's real estate sector is inevitable, a much more significant financial crisis might be looming.